This is Tune Up Thursday. My name is Willie Wright. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let me ask you a question. Do you know somebody that's going through suffering and pain? In fact, you're going through some suffering and pain. Have you wondered why there's so much suffering and pain in the world today? And why do people just prey on innocent people and inflict suffering and pain? And if there is a loving God, then why doesn't he just, why does he permit suffering and pain? And why doesn't he just stop it? Listen, I got a good one for you that's coming at you right now, real fast. Welcome to our Thursday devotion to jumpstart your day to bring joy to your morning. Got a good one for you to jumpstart your day to bring joy to your morning. We're talking about suffering and pain and why there is this existence of suffering and pain. In fact, if there's a loving God like people talk about, then why does he permit suffering and pain? Listen, we're coming from a Bible scripture that's found in Romans chapter 8. That's Romans chapter 8, and we're looking at verse 22 and 23. I'm going to read it in your hearing. If you got your Bibles, you can look at it too. Romans chapter 8, verse 22 and 23. This is what it says. It says, For we know that the whole creation groans and suffers like the pains of childbirth together until now. And not only this, but also we ourselves having the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our body. Well, in verse 22, it definitely talks about the whole creation, that's including you and I, is going through suffering and pain. I believe the Bible gives the best explanation and answer to why we have so much suffering and pain in our world. Now, I'm going to come through the back door and I'm going to begin to explain to you why, according to the Bible, why there is so much suffering and pain. First of all, I want to say that there is obviously a need for laws. I'm coming through the back door and you explain, I'll explain why I'm starting out with law. Um, the existence and need of laws are obvious, and we have all kinds of laws uh, today. We have civil law, and for example, we have traffic laws, uh, stop signs and stoplights. We have also what is called the laws of nature, um, and the laws of nature, of course, uh, speak to us um, about what is right on how we should govern our behavior. We have also... Um, what is called natural laws and natural laws teach us how or speak to us how we should uh, conduct ourselves. And then what you, what you also have um, the moral law, like the Ten Commandments that is found in the Bibles. So all of these laws are designed to govern our behavior. Um, and most laws are good for humanity so that we might live um, life successfully. Now, most laws are for that particular reason, um, unless, of course, there's somebody who designs a law and is designed to hurt people. Uh, but most of the time, laws are created and made for the betterment huma for humanity and so that it might govern our behavior. Now, the main reason why there is so much suffering and pain in the world today is because men and women violate one or two or three or even all of these laws that were just mentioned. Um, that's why suffering and pain, that's most of the cause of suffering and pain uh, today. Um, diseases and so forth and sicknesses today is a violation of the laws of nature or the moral laws that we find in the Bible. Um, for example, if you don't eat proper food with nutrition and so forth, or you don't get enough sleep, of course, you're going to get sick. You're going to experience suffering and pain as a result of that. If you violate civil laws or even the moral law and begin to murder and kill and so forth and abuse, you are going to, um, it's a result of suffering and pain, or you're going to experience suffering and pain. So now, I believe that the Bible gives, again, the best answer, explanation of why you and I are going through suffering and pain. 
And in order to do, in order to understand it, we must understand suffering and pain through the context of the great controversy that the Bible talks about in it. In, in fact, the Bible describes a war in heaven that is result has resulted in a battle here on earth. And I'm going to read it in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 and 8. This is what it says. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they prevailed not, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 through 9, it gives us two contenders there. It talks about Michael, and it talks about a dragon, that both of them were in a battle here, and it began in heaven. Now, a close study of the person of Michael, in fact, the word Michael is another, is means one who is like God. A close study of this person called Michael will reveal that Michael is simply another name for the son of God or Christ. If you read Daniel chapter 10 and compare it with chapter 12, you compare it with also 1 Thessalonians, that is chapter 4, verse 16, and then John chapter 5, verse 28, you will find that this person by the name of Michael, who is a great conqueror and a mighty warrior for the people of God, is none other than the Son of God. Now, the other person is called the dragon, and it's very clear who he is. The dragon is compared or set to be another name for Satan. If you look at Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, here's what it says. So the dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. So here the Bible lets us know that there are two great contenders uh, in this war um, that helps us to understand why there is suffering and pain. First, there's Michael, who is the son of God, and Satan. And war broke out between the two of them, and which resulted in suffering and pain in our world today. I'm going to explain it even more. So let's look at this person called Satan or um, the dragon, right? The Bible lets us know that Satan is a angel in rebellion. If you turn in your Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 28 and starting with verse 14, I'm going to read verse 14 and 15. You will see it right there. It says, you were the anointed cherub who covers, talking about Lucifer or Satan. I establish you, you were on the holy mount of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. Talking about Satan. So something happened to Satan or Lucifer who became Satan. He became a rebellious angel in heaven and war broke out. A conflict broke out between him and the creator. Uh, the Bible explains to us the fact that Satan sought to establish his own government, his own laws over and above, and in fact, to usurp God and his government. I'm going to read that in Isaiah. If you can't, if you don't have your Bibles with you now, check these verses out. It'll give you some great insight to why there's so much suffering and pain in our world today. In Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 through 14, this is what it says. How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How are you cut down to the ground? For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also in the mount of the congregation on the furthest side of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Wow. What incredible words here that Lucifer who was an angel who became a rebellious angel, decided that he was going to be like the Most High. He was going to send, ascend above the heights of the clouds of God. Satan's claim is that we don't have to obey God's law. We don't have to abide by God's government and his rules. We can be our own God. We can live our own way. And so the Bible is very clear that Satan and his angels is ultimately the cause of suffering and pain in our world. In fact, the Bible lets us know that he was cast down into this earth and he is the reason 
why there is so much suffering and pain in the world. He is inflicting it on many people in many different ways. Now, there, according to the Bible, there are three um, reasons why there's so much suffering and pain in the world. Number one, sin. Number two, our own choices and decisions that we make. And then number three, Satan. Satan is the cause of so much suffering and pain in the world. Our happiness depends upon our obedience to God's law, his laws of nature and his moral law. If we are obedient to these things, it will cause much happiness in our lives. Now, in Genesis chapter three, the Bible lets us know that Adam and Eve, the first parents of our world, uh, violated the laws of God. And that's the reason why we have suffering and pain in our world. Satan came to this world, deceived Adam and Eve, and they violated the law of God, which introduced to the world suffering and pain, death, and as a result, suffering and pain. I'm going to read it in, in Romans chapter 5, verse 12. This is what it says. As by one man sin into the world, and death by sin. And of course, if there's death, there is suffering and pain. And so death passed upon all men. So the Bible describes why there's so much suffering and pain. Ultimately, it comes from Satan. And secondarily, it comes from violating the laws of God, his natural law. Uh, laws of nature and that in his moral uh, law. According to the Bible, God had devised a way to remove suffering and pain. And by the way, when Adam and Eve sinned, they violated God's law. Again, they violated God's laws, um, as which is a result of suffering and pain. Now, the Bible lets us know the results of suffering and pain in these verses here. In 1 John chapter 3, in verse 4, it says, sin is the transgression of the law. In Romans chapter 6, verse 23, it says, the wages of sin is death. So again, I know I was a little redundant here, but violation of God's law causes death. And that's what Adam and Eve did in Genesis 3. And as a result of death, of course, we have suffering and pain. Adam and Eve violated God's law because they were deceived by Satan who is ultimately the cause of suffering and pain and death in our world today. But God devised a plan by which he could remove suffering and pain and death in our world. In fact, you'll find according to the Bible, God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to become the very thing that is causing suffering and pain in our lives that he might remove suffering and pain incredible and so I'm going to read a passage of scripture found in Romans chapter 5 and verse 6 it says this for when we were still without sin in due time Christ died for the ungodly and so Christ came and became sin that he might remove suffering and pain from our lives it's kind of like um, the idea of immunization. Uh, when a person is immunized, they inject them with a small trace of um, whatever disease they're trying to combat um, so that the body might um, develop antibodies so that we would be immune to um, whatever disease. Christ came um, and was injected in humanity so that you and I might build up a defense against sin and of course removing sin and sickness and disease and suffering and pain and so the son of god came willingly for you and i to die for us so that we he could remove suffering and pain in our lives and christ is the only one since satan says that god is unfair that his laws are unfair and unruly and we don't have to abide by them christ came also um, not only to remove sin but to reveal the character of god that god is a loving god and there were, could be no other that could do that an angel couldn't do it a created being couldn't do it only the son of god could come and die for the sins of mankind revealing the character of god and ultimately removing sin 
And so Christ's life is a demonstration of the love of God. And in fact, you'll find when you read from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you'll find that Christ's, Christ's life was filled with relieving suffering and pain. And God is still in the process of relieving and removing suffering and pain in this world. And I believe based upon the Bible that soon and very soon, soon and very soon, that this world will be relieved of suffering and pain and ultimately death as a result of what Christ has done on Calvary's cross. So God permits sin and suffering and pain to reveal really, here's another point that I want to make, the character of Satan and the character of God. And so again, God permits suffering and pain in your life and in my life to reveal the true character of God and the true character of Satan, who is the ultimate inflictor of suffering and pain. That's it, everybody. That's our devotional thought for today to jumpstart your day, to bring joy to your morning. Listen, we're going to transition now. We're going to go right into um, our time of prayer. I, I said it, say it all the time. I believe in the power of prayer. I've seen God do some incredible things. He doesn't stop doing it. And uh, so, um, we're going to give you an opportunity to send your prayer requests on the comment line, and uh, we're going to pray just for you. So if you have any prayer requests, go ahead and send them on the comment line. I don't know what's going on right now, but my um, my comment uh, line is frozen just a little bit. So if you have any prayer requests, go ahead and send them. I'll take them, and I'll pray for you. All right, Barbara, I see. Uh, thank you for tuning in and uh, Amanda I thank you so much for tuning in and Carmen I thank you so much for tuning in all right I'm seeing some prayer requests coming in right now all right I'm gonna pray for Barbara she's asking for prayer for Tammy uh, Vicky and um, of course the Capital City uh, Church and uh, Grady so I'm gonna pray for those things right now Heavenly Father you are a mighty God you're a, a God that is above all things and you can do all things and so I'm asking that you would remember Tammy Vicky in a very special way. You know her condition. And I just place her matter in your hand. Remember Barbara in a very special way. I'm asking you, Lord, your blessings upon her life, uh, her chronic pain that she goes through, asking you, Lord, that you would reveal it, even remove it. And if you choose not to remove it, Lord, give her the strength to bear it. Remember the Capital City Church family. And of course, uh, we're asking you, you will bind us together in love. And remember Grady in a very special way, wherever he is, whatever he needs, we know that you can provide it. Remember, uh, all right, uh, Carmen, we see your prayer request, uh, Justin and uh, the Tyrell family. Heavenly Father, I'm asking that you would remember Justin in a very special way. Look upon him, and Lord, and we're asking that you would continue to touch his body and to bring recovery and healing to it, and Lord, cover the Tyrell family in your love where healing is needed. We're asking that you would bring healing where understanding is needed, asking that you would bring understanding, protect them, keep them. Oh God, I pray. And I thank you, Lord, for a uh, Lolita Scott. That's on the, um, the tune up Thursday today. She's asking for healing. And of course the city of Athens. All right, Georgia. Yes. All right. We're going to pray uh, for that heavenly father. Again, we come to you in the name of Jesus, asking, Lord, for healing and uh, healing not only for the Scott family, asking you, Lord, that you would be with every single one of them that is collect connected to Lilita. And remember the city of Athens, not quite sure what's going on in Georgia, but Lord, we know that Georgia is not too far from you. And um, it's just a prayer way asking you, Lord, that you would just. Uh, step into that city and um, do what is needed in that city. Oh, God, please. Um, not only Georgia, but all of the cities that's going on. Um, the shooting that is going on. Yes, Lilita, thank you so much. The shooting that is going on, guns and violence in our world today. But we know ultimately who is the culprit of uh, guns and shooting and killing and murder and suffering and pain. It is Satan. And, oh, God, I'm asking that you would bind him um, in our lives and in our cities, in our world. We're asking you, Lord, that we would be channels whereby which 
uh, suffering and pain will be removed uh, in our world. And we long for that day when you will remove suffering and pain and destroy Satan um, in this world. Help us to be ready to that end. And, oh, God, I'm asking that you would bless the Tune Up Thursday in a very special way. Give me uh, creativity. Give me the subjects that need to be uh, discussed uh, from your word that it might be a blessing to the public. Thank you, oh, God, for this time that we've had together. Thank you for your goodness and your grace. Thank you for all that you do uh, in our lives. And we're asking you, Lord, that you would just uh, just work a miracle in our lives. In Jesus name, we pray. Amen and amen. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I changed the channel. It's the tune up the tune up. In fact, you can check me out on Instagram It's the tune up T. You got to Don't forget that T at the end. The tune up T for Thursday. All right. And or for throttle. I like that. Um, the tune up T. Don't forget to subscribe. I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel It's the tune up. And uh, hit the like button, everybody. And also, we want you to share this video on your timeline. There's so many people going through suffering and pain that needs to be jump-started. They need to be encouraged um, in the things of God. And so you can be a part of that by sharing this video on your timeline. And again, don't forget to subscribe and um, hit the like button. God bless you, and we'll see you at the same place, same time, um, to jump-start your day, to bring joy to your morning. Shh.